Welcome to the Relax Into Love podcast, the place for spiritual, ambitious women to awaken to divine connection within themselves and their partner and manifest their most desired relationship with joy and ease. I'm Teal Elizabeth, your host, a spiritual love and relationship coach trained in the principles of feminine energy, NLP, and deep subconscious reprogramming. And through this podcast, it is my desire to inspire you on all things dating, relationships, and self-love. Now, on to the show. Welcome back to the Relax Into Love podcast. Hi, ladies. It's your host, Teal Elizabeth. And I have a really exciting episode to share with you, ladies. This was, I've been on a series of different, um, you know, expert panel summits over the years. And this recording was one that I'm going to be sharing with you today that was so profound and powerful. It was um, featured on Chelsea Rose's summit um, called the Irresistible Woman series. And she and I just went really deep into what it really takes to become irresistible to men and what that even means and how to do it. And I'm just sharing all my fun, beautiful thoughts and ideas and perspectives on it. And um, I've gotten such really good feedback from this podcast that I wanted to repurpose it and bring it onto my podcast. So definitely take a notepad with you, jot down notes, because I think there's gonna be a lot of fun, inspiring things to activate you from this conversation. Um, And at the end, stay tuned because there's a very special invitation for each of you. With that, let's jump in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Irresistible Woman series. I'm your host, Chelsea Rose, and I'm here with the beautiful Teal Elizabeth. Welcome, Teal. Hi. Hi, ladies. (laughs) I'm so excited you're here. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to give you a proper introduction. Teal Elizabeth, CEO and founder of Relax Into Love Coaching, is a spiritual love and relationship coach trained in the principles of feminine energy, NLP, and deep subconscious reprogramming. She supports ambitious, high-achieving women to fall back in love with themselves and manifest their desired relationship with joy and ease. She is happily married to her husband of 10 years and just settled down to have a beautiful baby boy after traveling the world as nomadic entrepreneurs. So welcome, Teal. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. Me too. Me too. So my first question for you is one of my favorite, and that is what makes a woman irresistible to men? Ooh, Ooh. (laughs) that's such a good way to kick this off. Yes. Well, and I don't think I've actually ever been asked that question before, but I know I really do feel like I have a good, good feeling and a good answer for this because... We as women have such an untapped gift that I think has especially been lost in this modern day of age, the gift of truly being in touch with our divinity. And I don't want to lose everyone with like all the meta talk of like, you know, the woo, but there is such a level, I feel like of connection of intuition and divinity within our souls that men usually are not quite as tapped into. And it's not to say that they aren't spiritual soul beings. They absolutely are. But I think it's something that is innate in women that when we choose to connect to it, makes us absolutely irresistible. And it's not something that we can show them. It's not something we can tell them. It's not something that we can even demonstrate. It's all in how they feel us. And I know you talk about this a lot too, energy, uh, Chelsea, about the energy, right? And and I love talking about this too. It's the energy that they feel in our presence. And when we as women can get really, really comfortable with tapping into this irresistible divinity, divine feminine energy within us, it is like honey to bees, right? It is like just that, that drawing magnetic energy that makes them go, Ooh, I want more. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I love that. I don't, I don't know why I'm surprised by this answer. I guess I didn't know you would go in that direction, but I'm so glad that you did. And it sort of took my breath away hearing you share that. It resonates so deeply. Um, so thank you for dropping us into that. Depth. We're, just, we're just going in right now. Yeah, right? That was like, we're going all the way, first thing. Um, and I have a follow-up question to that. And I'm sure there's many, many ways, you know, many answers to this question, but just what's alive and present for you right now around how can women more deeply reveal that divinity 
Mm -hmm. and feel feel it embody it but I think it is more so about revealing it to men Mm -hmm. Um, yeah and I know sometimes there can be an effortlessness to it as well but do you have any sort of tangible tips around that absolutely absolutely and this is something it's been it's actually very present for me right now and I literally just today was like there it is there she is and like I tapped back into it for myself because I I just had a baby seven months ago and which is just the most incredible experience of my life, but it definitely threw me out of my normal ways of being in a lot of ways. Like in some ways it brought me closer to my divinity and my feminine energy, but in other ways it threw me out of that because I kind of went into survival mode of just trying to take care of this little being and get sleep and get, you know, just figure out life. And it threw me up into my head of the logistics and the planning and just kind of, I lost touch with that essence of myself. And even just today, it was like, okay, I need to come back home to that part within me that makes me feel radiant and alive. And when I tap into feeling radiant and alive, my man feels it. My baby feels it. My dog feels it. Everybody feels it. Right. So I think understanding first and foremost for ladies, you know, when you are in that place of feeling in your connected to your flow versus being in that place of feeling disconnected. And I think that it can be hard to even know what that feels like if you haven't experienced it much. Because naturally, our operating system, our default mode is to be doing, be going, be achieving, be right, be out in the world, be proving ourselves to the world. And so to give ourselves permission to just stop doing all the stuff out there and just be with ourselves here can kind of feel uncomfortable. And so I think a tangible first step for anyone that is feeling like they want to be able to show that more to a man is to first come back home to what that actually feels like within yourself. And I don't know about for you, but for me, it just feels like a sense of relief. It's like a weight that's been lifted. It's like, oh yeah, life doesn't have to be so hard. Life doesn't have to be so heavy. I don't have to be thinking so much. I don't have to be in my head so much. It's about letting the mind just kind of calm down a bit and coming back into the very present moment of just being real with what is here in this moment, in this moment, how are you feeling, right? What do you need and giving yourself that connection to that first. And then it naturally does just exude out of you because as you fill back up your own cup and you feel really good in this present moment, right? You're not stressing about the future. You're not thinking about the past. You're not overanalyzing. You're not overthinking. You're just really in a place of peace and contentment with your life here and now. Then that naturally starts to overflow out to everyone that you connect with. Oh my gosh. I love Love, love, love that answer. And I was going to um, reflect this back to you and you just kept going deeper into it. I was going to say, are you kind of speaking into that experience of going from your head to your body? And, and then you nailed it. <laughs> with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it is, it's, it's all these concepts feel so kind of intangible. So it can be very hard to be like, do this, do this, do this. Right. But it, it's just about an awareness, a deeper awareness for each of you of like, How much time do I spend in my head thinking, right, or planning or getting caught up in anxiety versus just giving myself permission to literally switch off my brain (laughs) and just be me, right? When you're at home and you're thinking, oh, I got to clean the dishes, I got to, you know, pay the bills, I got to take the dog on a walk. Is that just something that your mind is like, okay, I got to do, 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 do? Or are we taking these moments as like an opportunity to just drop in and be and be present with that? I love how simple you're putting it. And that, and I really, really resonate with that, that when you're present, it happens, you know, because I think it is, like you said, can be so intangible. How do we go from our heads to our bodies? And it can feel like such a, a long journey sometimes, but all it really <laughs> takes at least at, at first starting point is just to come into the present moment and something, I don't know where I first heard this, but it reminds me of when you're anxious, just looking at, around the room and counting as many colors as you see. Like it doesn't have to be this like super woo woo complicated thing. It can literally just be like, let me turn on my my senses and start observing 
my space, at least for me, that instantly grounds me. And then you can, I feel like you can go into those deeper questions of, I wrote down some things you said, what am I feeling? What do I need? I love that so much. And to take it even deeper, men are so aware of how you, your energy is showing up. They may not be able to tell you, but they, they are picking up on it and they are receiving it. And then they're responding like corresponding to that. So if you are coming into any situation with a man and you've been in that kind of state of doing, going, proving, achieving, right. And being stressed and being in that thoughtful, in that headspace. And then you bring that into an interaction with a man, they're going to meet you there in the brain, but they may not feel the connection on a heart level because you are not connected in your heart. You are still up in the brain overthinking everything. So the whole like, oh yeah, just be present. It may seem really cliche and really obvious, but it really makes a huge difference because it drops you into just a a state of your energy calming down. And when your energy calms down, then when you bring that energy to a man, he goes, Ooh, wow. Now, there's something different about her. I like her. I like this. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it pulls them into that space as well. Oh my God. I love that. And that's a perfect segue into another question I wanted to ask you, which is what does feminine embodiment in dating look like for mm-hmm. women? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. To me, feminine embodiment in dating is about giving men a sanctuary to feel safe in, right? Lots of times we think about dating as just like the swiping and the meeting and they got to meet my criteria and they got to prove to me that they need, you know, to hit all these boxes for me to feel good about it. We, We kind of almost swing too far over of like, let's make sure they work for me. But what if you were to actually just show up in every interaction from a full overflowing place in yourself and just be there to hold them in their energy and in their feelings, right? Because men don't have this opportunity very often to just drop into their hearts and be in their feelings. And not to say you have to crack them open and have them tell you all their big, deepest secrets, right? But just what if you went into a date with no agenda, with no needing to mark the criteria of how they they work for you, and you just showed up in a place of, how can I love on you today, right? How can I inspire you? How can I learn something from you today? And just give them the space to feel you because that's all that they need. They just need to feel you. Oh, I love that. I love that. And it reminds me of what I love to talk about a lot, which is just being yourself, being authentic when we're not like in our minds, checking off those boxes, then we can really be present. That theme again of presence and be ourselves. And I, I, I love that. I love that you're saying that that's all they really need, um, is to feel us, to feel our authentic. And I don't know what it is, right? I don't know what it is about why, when we get with date, you know, with dating with men, we turn into this other version of ourselves and with our girlfriends, they're like, you're so great. Why don't guys get, you know, why aren't guys lining up at your door? And you're like, oh no, why do you want to come to me? But it's like, we almost shift and we change into this other version of ourself that the girlfriends aren't seeing, the guys are seeing. And it's like, we feel uncomfortable being ourselves. We feel uncomfortable being that authentic version. I call her the crazy girl, right? <laughs> you <don't want> out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so relatable Mm -hmm. and I think too like I at least I've witnessed this in my you know clients early on like before working with me they come to this work because they've been heartbroken and they've been disappointed so they've probably already watched a lot of you know videos online before they start to work with me and they're they're trying to prevent repeating past mistakes so they put on like the they accidentally step into like the crazy girl which I love that archetype name (laughs) um to try to not make the same mistakes. Right. And so I think, I think part of this is recognizing that when you are present, like you're describing, there's a level of trust, Mm self-trust that happens naturally. Yes. And we could argue that some of the mistakes or some of the disappointment and heartbreak was from a lack of presence. Mm -hmm. So I do find that women kind of um, overcorrect 
mm-hmm. like with good intentions yes. when they've like accidentally gone for like the narcissist or they've gone for the unavailable guy or the guy who like love bombed them and then yeah. ghost. And so they come with their little notes because they're trying to be like a good student, you know? Yes, yes totally. So and I feel you girls and I love it. And I'm celebrating you in that. And it's like, oh, we, we overcomplicate it. <laughs> we overcomplicate. I think yeah. we so do. We so do. Um, thank you for sharing all of that. And my next question is, what do you see are the top pitfalls that women make in the dating process with men? Hmm. I, I want to just continue the conversation that you just brought up to add, to answer this question, because it's so perfectly goes into it. I think the lack of trusting ourselves is a big, big pitfall, I guess you could say, um, because we are trying so hard to not make mistakes that we end up again, thinking through things too much or, or thinking pat on past experiences too much that then dictate how we show up. And it actually disconnects us from what I was talking about in the beginning, that divinity within ourselves, that intuition, that natural self-trust that lets us just exactly know how to navigate the situation. You do, I'm speaking directly to each of you right now. You do know exactly how to be in a loving relationship. It's just that somewhere along the way, you got lost and you lost touch with that natural intuition within yourself. And what Chelsea and I and all the beautiful love and relationship coaches out there are really just trying to help you to come back in touch with yourself again and trusting your own intuition so that you can be able to feel like you can just be authentically you in a relationship. And I think that's the pitfall, right? Is that we lose, we don't trust men, but really it's a, we don't trust ourselves or we've done things in the past that we made oopsies and now we are afraid to trust ourselves again, right? So, you know, really reflecting this question to each of you to think about is what would that look like to really trust yourself? What do you need to do? What steps do you need to take to come back to that place of trusting yourself again and being able to listen to that little voice inside that is always guiding you in the right ways? Because usually all those things that happened in the past probably had a tiny little red flag that you didn't listen to within your intuition that could have been avoided. And sometimes it can't. Sometimes we just, we go through these experiences and we needed to go through these experiences for our own soul growth. And that's good too. But a lot of times we, we miss those little red flags that our intuition was like, ah, 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 because we're trying so hard, Right. So that's the whole kind of preface of my world is relaxing into love, not just from a place of like, oh, this gets to be easy and fun, but like trusting and relaxing into not having to overthink everything, getting to really just be in that place of alignment. So well said. Thank you for sharing. I love how you um, instill this idea that it's natural. Like that the divinity is natural, the intuition, the knowing is natural, and therefore the self-trust is really gets to unfold naturally. And that word relax, I, I love it. It just fits so well. And <laughs> thank you for sharing all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm trying to decide. I have like so many questions and so little time. <laughs> Which one do I want to ask? <laughs> um, I would love to hear your top communication tips for women. Um, I think this, at least for my audience, I found this is a huge point of confusion for women. I think again, because of a lot of overconsumption of content (laughs) that can end up, you know, confusing women and making it more complicated, like you said, than it needs to be. Um, and so I, this is a topic that I love and I love to support women with. I'd love to hear what you have to say around that. And um, yeah, just what, what are your top tips for communicating with men? Yeah. And, I, and <laughs> again, I feel like you and I are just on the same wavelength here because that was going to be my next follow-up was that, okay, <laughs> yes, we can, we can be trusting ourselves, but there are tools and like practical skills that we do need to learn 
to make sure that we are creating a healthy foundation for a relationship, right? We can trust and listen to all the intuitive nudges, but if we don't know how to hold that space and communicate in a loving, respectful way, then we can end up sabotaging something really good that's there. Um, And communication is a massive part of that. And I agree, it is such an, an important part that I love supporting women with too. And something that so many women struggle with. And if any of you watching are struggling with relationship communication, like just know that this is something that is not necessarily taught in our world unless you go out seeking it. So I'm celebrating you for watching this and learning and seeking this information because we don't have the best role models for communication all the time. Um, and for me, I think to be able to establish healthy communication, really, first off, it looks like being able to manage your emotions and process your feelings before responding to any situation, right? There's so many times when you'll be in a situation and something, he says something and it triggers you and you just go at it, right? You lash out and you go at it, or you push it down and it just bubbles and it festers. And both of those avenues are not healthy ways to process those feelings. So making sure that you understand how to be able to manage those emotions in a healthy way. And then the second tip would be to, once you've processed that feeling and you get to that deeper truth of what it is that you want to say, being able to say that with love and compassion, right? Because even though they may be pipping you off in the moment, right? (laughs) They are still a loving being that deserves respect. And I think this is something that I see happen so much is that we lose respect when conflict comes up. We start to look at this person and look down on them and say, oh God, I just can't stand this person. And that communication then er erodes because we're not treating them at that same level of like, I respect you, you respect me. This is just a moment that we get to work through together as teammates. It becomes a, you are my enemy and we have to fight this out, right? So I think coming into every communication with just that level of respect and love is really important. And then the third part would be about just helping to really model for them what healthy communication, what that container of emotional safety gets to look like. Because I think as women, kind of again, going to the first question, we tend to be more connected to that more emotional mature side than the men we date. (laughs) And unfortunately, that's just the way it is. (laughs) If you found one that's emotionally mature, more emotionally mature, then you've struck gold. But for the most part, it's important to know that we just we get to be the models of what that looks like. And men are always kind of, like I said, responding to how we show up. So if you really take it upon yourself and empower yourself to learn healthy communication specifics and model that for them, they will more times than not be able to fall into pace with you in that. Sometimes women come to me and they're like, gosh, why do I have to be the one that has to change? Why do I have to do all the work? Why do they just get to be there? Right. But Really, it's again, it's like it's being this this radiant divine expression of love and helping bring them into that space within themselves. And that that is part of communication as well. So powerful and beautiful. And I relate a lot in my marriage <laughs> to that. Mm-hmm. And and I, I think it's so true that that you know, healthy masculine men will match will they'll match you even if it's a skill that is new for them they'll you know when you embody that warm loving respectful energy they it's so attractive and you can really overcome anything in in, in any conflict any issue through yeah. communication when i think when you're embodying that love and patience and I can so relate to when I'm triggered, like accidentally looking down. I was like, oh my God, we so, we all do that. <laughs> it's so funny that, um, yeah, that tendency. And so I love everything you said. Thank you. I think too, it helps, it helps just bring it into a place of empowering women versus um, feeling like it's all our fault, right? It's like, it's not that it's, you're the one that's messing up and you have to be the one to fix everything, or you have to be the one to grow and evolve. It's just, we get to take on this opportunity, right. To be 
the bigger person to be the inspiration, um, to help elevate them and inspire them to step up. And that's what, to me, a beautiful relationship and partnership is all about, right? It's a container. It's an incubator for two souls to continue to evolve and grow alongside of each other. And it may not always be equal in how that works, but they're going to be inspiring you to grow in ways that maybe you didn't realize either. So can you, can you look at communication issues and challenges as just more of a chance for you to grow and help inspire your partner to grow within the relationship versus it being just this conflict that they're messing up on? (laughs) I love that. And I was going to say that too, that there's many, many things that your male partner will call you to rise in as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. And I love how you're saying for a lot of women, this part might come more naturally for them than their male partners. And there's nothing wrong with either one of you because of that. It reminds me of the book, um, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. <laughs> uh, seriously, and, Yeah. It's well said in that book as well. Yeah. Um, and, and just to keep going with that, like I know for like myself to really paint the vision of this, when I really started to, to understand this, it was like, he just started to melt. My man just started to melt in my presence. Like I remember we were early phase of dating and I was like trying on this whole feminine embodiment thing. It was a new thing for me at the time. And I remember I like lit candles all around my house and I had the couch all cute and clean. I had nice relaxing music on and I had a glass of wine with him. And I just would, I'd call him over to the couch and he would just put his head on my lap and I would just pet his head and he would just melt And he would just open up and just share and I would be able to share. And it just dropped us into such a beautiful vulnerability and such a, an emotional safe space. And that was me setting that container physically and emotionally for him to feel like, oh, I can, I can drop into her sanctuary. Right. And so we get to have that opportunity to do that and create this amazing experience that men just can't get enough of if we choose to be intentional with it. Uh, You painted such a beautiful picture. And um, something that I found is that when we don't do that, men, even if we have great intentions and we're genuinely not trying to attack our partner, men can feel like they need to like, bring out the sword and get the shield, you know, like they can feel like they're going to war or something. If we aren't in that dropped in space, even if we have great intentions. I found that, that like, okay, I have to really get into my softness, get into my heart, relax (laughs) and feel safe in myself. And then he is going to be, feel safe for me to share something difficult or share something that he otherwise might get defensive with. If I wasn't energy, I've marriage is a beautiful place to practice all of <laughs> long-term partnership, I should say. Um, so I, I love that so much. Um, yeah. thank you for sharing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, is there any other like kind of final thoughts and final sort of words of encouragement that you have for the women listening who are desiring to become irresistible to their dream partner? Mm. anything else in your heart or like final last thoughts yeah yeah most importantly I think women are way too hard on themselves and we got to cut ourselves some serious slack right it's like God damn it. We got to do everything these days. We got to pay the bills. We got to make the money. We got to look the part. We got to act cute, but not cute enough. We have to, like, you know, we have to, we have to, we try so hard to do so much and be everything and be perfect. And then we're reminded online all the time of all the ways that we're not perfect and not having what we want. And more than anything, I just want to give each of you just permission that you are exactly okay right where you are. And that this whole journey of life is just a gentle unfolding to continue to deepen your own growth. And you may not have that partner right now that would make you feel super happy, but when we can come back into a place of peace and acceptance of this current moment, it's like so much weight is lifted. And we can get back into a place of really relaxing into just being happy where we are now. And I promise you, my 
I love that when you can just focus on that and really deepening into that place of self-love and just acceptance and joy and gratitude for where you are in this moment, all the things that you want out there start magically finding their way to you without so much work and without so much effort. And my whole goal is to help inspire you and bring you into that place within yourself so that everything else on the external can just kind of fall into place naturally. Yum. Yum. <laughs> one word response to that. Uh, yum. Yum. Yum, everyone. <laughs> That's a little title of this, this interview. Yum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful and heartwarming and wow it just t- touched my heart so deeply I want to thank you so much for your wisdom mm. and your time and your presence and everything all the love that you shared your heart is so big and it's just mm. I feel it through the screen and I know that everyone listening um, got to feel that too and I know you have a free gift as well uh, that you'd like to share do you want to speak into that before we yeah, wrap up. Definitely, definitely. For any women that are just inspired from this interview and would love to just connect with me deeper, I would love to gift you a free love breakthrough call with me and just an opportunity to hop on Zoom for 30 minutes and just get to chat about wherever you're at, whatever you're feeling you want support with, and just see how I can best support you in that. So I'll leave the link down below so you can have time to book in time with me. Um, I know I will have limited space. So if this is something you really want, make sure you book in now. Um, But yeah, I'm really excited to get to meet you. That is so generous of you. Thank you so much for offering that to our listeners. And thank you for your time. That was amazing. I had so much fun connecting with you. Same, Same, Chelsea. Thank you so much. Bye. All the best. (laughs) Bye.